Every moment tonight, they lend me to you. Every single time you look at me, I lose it too. Why don't you? Hi, this is Dina with Pretty Productive. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, what I'm going to be doing is a November budget set up and then I'm going to determine my cash for cash stuffing which will be Friday the 29th I believe it is so for me November is going to be a five week month so my husband and I get paid monthly we get paid on the first of the month or if the first of the month is like on a Monday then we get paid the day before so this month for November we'll get paid on the 29th so my budget will start there. So I'm, it's kind of like a four and a half week, but I'm gonna go ahead and set it up as a five week budget. So this will be one, two, three, four, and then I like to do my check-ins on a Friday. So I'm gonna kind of lay it out as a five week month. Okay, so let's get started. Um, this is the Erin Condren seven by nine deluxe monthly. I do get that question. Um, the kit that I'm going to be using for this month is um, one from my shop, obviously. And it's kind of a fall themed kit. So I'm going to be using, this is my kit for my weekly check-in. And this is going to be my kit for the monthly view. And then I also have a coding system for my transactions that I'll move over after I do my check-in for this week. So... That is what October looked like, and we're going to get started. So I actually start on this sheet, and this is a sheet that I've been doing um, as long as I've been doing kind of this program of budgeting, and it just helps me to kind of lay out my categories and what categories are going to be in cash, what's going to be going to sinking funds. So this has been super helpful for me in keeping track of my budget as well as my check-ins on my weekly basis to see where I am for the month. So let's get started. I hope you are all ready for November. Um, I love setting up a new budget. I feel like it's a new start and you get that new start every single month. <laughs> and October has been a tough month for me as far as my budget's concerned. So I'm always happy to turn the page and have a new budget. So for payday number one, I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer. So my husband and I both get paid once a month and that's it. So for years we were paid bi-weekly, but um, now that I'm retired and he's retired, then, well, he retired and went back to work, but we get paid monthly. So my one daughter pays me 180, the other one is now working again, so she'll pay me 200. And then extra is just any other money that comes in. So for an example, in the month of October, I had loaned somebody $500 and they paid me back. So I could have put that back into my budget as an extra, but instead I used it to buy things that I wanted to get. So there you go. So our income, $49.50 plus $49.50 plus $180 plus $200. And I know I have not said this in a long time on my budget videos, but budgeting is super personal. Um, your attitude, your habits with money are all very personal. I know for myself that I'm very much an emotional spender. I, you know, if I'm stressed or I'm unhappy, I will, I like to go spend money. If I, you know, kind of go down a rabbit hole like I am right now with planners, getting everything ready, you know, my way that I like to control things is to be super organized and super prepared. So that's kind of what, you know, I know about myself. So you really have to kind of look inward and say, you know, would this kind of a budgeting system work for me or does it not? And try to find the budgeting system that works with your personality and your money habits. So this is loosely based on Dave Ramsey in that every dollar has a home. But what I do differently than Dave Ramsey is I do use a credit card that 
I do all my direct bills, like all my things, like my phone bill and my internet bill, those kind of bills get paid to that, get paid by that, and then I pay that off at the end of every month. So I've had to learn how to use credit cards <laughs> that way. Um, that was not always the case. I used to carry a balance. So my husband and I have been debt free other than our mortgage since I think it was kind of officially 2019. And then we did have, um, I did have, I should say, like an Apple Care card that was interest free that I bought my laptop and my computer with. So I paid that off. So we have no consumer debt and we just recently paid cash for a car. So it's something we've worked on for so many years. So, you know, don't judge where you are in your budgeting time with somebody else. Um, there's a lot of different budgeting YouTube videos out there. And I love the fact that it's from a college student or somebody who's more, you know, middle age, raising a family and working through their budget, single moms into my age group, which is retired and kind of, you know, working how you're going to work with a fixed income when you're not having the same amount of money come through. So, okay, enough said. <clears throat> oh, let's go. So my mortgage is 3100 I was paying extra on that, but when I knew that I was going to um, finish up my severance package in the first of the year, in talking to my financial planner, he said, please don't pay extra on your house. Take that money and put it back into your budget. So I was like, okay. Um, cell phone, 302. Gym, 52. Internet, 120. Netflix, 15. Life insurance, and this is for my husband and I, 106. Auto insurance, and it looks high, but we have our daughters on there and that's why they pay me back for their auto insurance. HBO Plus is a new one. And I need to also add car wash. So I joined like a frequent buyer car wash and get unlimited car washes for 15 a month versus 18 for one. Um, I live in Arizona and it's very dusty and dirty here. It's not dirty. <laughs> it's very dusty and your car gets dirty really quickly. So um, I do want to make sure that I'm protecting my paint by getting it washed often. Um, electricity has been all over the board this year. I'm going to look at what I paid last year for the month of October. So last year, my, well, really my November bill was 202. So I'm going to say 250 just to be safe. And then anything that is extra. So say my bill comes in at 200, the $50 I roll into a sinking fund for electricity for the summertime. Trash and water. I should have looked at when I was there. It's been running about 90, but um, let me just check. It was 97 last year, so I'll just keep it at 90. Natural gas has been running 25, but going into the winter time, I just looked at all this at one time, right? Oh, it's still there. Okay, so we'll leave it at 25. Pest control will have service this month, so I'm going to put 90. HOA is, we just paid it, it's quarterly, so I put 75 a month away towards that bill. So I've separated my fixed expenses that are going to be the same no matter what from my variable expenses, which fluctuate based on the time of the year or our weather or whether I'm having service or not service. Elements is my massage, it's 80, and Audible is 16. So let's go ahead and add that up. So for fixed expenses, six, four, three. 
it's 4,261. So I'm going to bring my income down. And then my variable expenses, 250, 90, 25, 90, and 75 is 530. Um, I love these erasable pens. If you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you know that. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go over to lifestyle. Because this is considered a five-week month for my budget, I'm going to do 500 for giving, 700 for groceries, eating out 250, clothing. I'm going to put 100. I haven't spent anything the last two months, but going into winter, I may. So I'm put, for spending, I'm going to put 250. Household. I'm rolling over money from the last two months. I'm just going to put 50. Entertainment, 50. Personal care, 100. Gas for car, we've been running right about 200. Craft supplies, which really should just be called stickers, 100. Miscellaneous, 100. Medicine, I'm going to put 100. I did go over in the month of October, and I don't even know what happened because my prescriptions went way up based on I don't know what but yeah so I picked up a 90 day supply which is a little different which is nice because now I won't need to pick up any more but I will have my husband's scripts that I will probably need to pick up in November so I'm going to leave it at 100 I may have to add more money to this going forward and for my mom 100 so lifestyle is one category that if I need to cut back, I can. I don't need to put as much into clothes or working out. I mean, eating out or spending, I could really pare down if I needed to. But this is kind of how I end up with. So these numbers are pretty tried and true for me. So lifestyle is $2,600. So what I do is I back in to my sinking funds. And I do have a lot of sinking funds. So I take my income, I subtract my fixed expenses, I subtract my variable expenses, my lifestyle expenses, And for sinking funds, I have 2889 Now, I am doing a 52-week challenge, and the November amount is 405 So I've gone ahead and written that in. So I take my 2889 Off the top, I take off the 405 So my sinking funds should be $2,484. And then that will balance out. So if I just do a really quick check on my math, okay, so they match. So 10,280 is what all my expenses will roll into and my savings and it is equal to my income. So every dollar budget. Now, sinking funds. Now I have not closed out my sinking funds for the month of October yet. Probably do that tomorrow. And so the sheet that I have for my sinking funds is actually not updated because I'll go through, and this is just an Excel spreadsheet, I'll just go through and update what my beginning balance is based on how I ended October. I have used money out of my sinking funds. And then at the end, um, then I'll put in what I'm going to add this month. So... Here's my, um, these are my cash envelopes. If it's highlighted in blue, it stays in my account. I don't pull it out in cash. And if it's highlighted in pink, that means it is a cash envelope that I weekly check in for. So let's go back to the beginning. I have them alphabetized, I know. Um, so the first one is adventures. 
I am really trying to get my husband to get out of his office a little bit more. Um, I should have. I'm not going to put my start in there because it's going to be wrong. So I'm adding in $25 this month. For anniversary, I'm adding in $50. Our anniversary is in February. So what I do when I decide what I'm putting in is I kind of look at what's coming up and then I decide, do I want to add or do I not want to add? I'll bring this out a little bit. So something that's going to happen in the back half of the year, I'm not going to worry about until I get closer to that date. And then arts and crafts. My sisters and I do craft night and I found that I never had a category for it so I was spending money out of other categories like my spending category or if I had grocery money left. <laughs> so not really what you want to do with your cash envelopes. I'm going to add 50. Beauty and skin care. I'm just going to put as beauty. I'm going to put 50. So this is any products that I need to buy like Shampoo, conditioner, makeup, anything like that, skincare. And then each of us have a birthday, each of us, like my immediate family. So my birthday fund. And then my daughter. And then my daughter and son-in-law. And the only reason why my husband does not have a birthday fund right now was he just had a birthday. So I'll wait a little bit longer. So I have birthday for my nieces and nephews. I've got 11 of them and they're really my nieces and nephews kids, not them. And then birthday family, which is my sisters and parents. So this is it's always been one big fund. So I put Christmas gifts, everything together. And I recently separated it out so that I have a gifting fund, which is friends, neighbors, shower gifts. We're going to about Misfit next month. That'll be that gift comes out of that fund. So anything that is not a birthday, that is a direct family member or a shower or anything like that. And then, so let's see. So for my daughter and I, our birthdays are in July. So I'm putting $50 a month into those so that by the time our birthdays roll around, we'll each have 500 in our fund. For the cars, it was just my daughter's birthday and I pretty much cleaned out her envelope. And her husband, my son-in-law's birthday is in February. So I need to start building that back up for him. My nieces and nephews, 50. And for my family, 50. So my immediate family, my sisters and my parents, all of our birthdays are done until May. So I've got some time to build that one back up. And then I have a dental fund, which I put 20 in. I have a Disney fund, because I really want to go back. We did have passes before the shutdown. So I figure I need probably about, what was it, 900 to buy pass, not passes, but tickets for it. And then we have a place to stay, but we'll need gas and food money. So my budget for Disney is 900. Easter, 25. My Etsy shop, I did major damage. Um, I bought a new laminator, a new printer, which I actually took out of technology because I figured it's something we use as a family anyways. And so um, I need to build this back up. So I'm going to do $223. Family barbecue. It's kind of all those different times that we do barbecues, 4th of July, Memorial Day, things like that. I just kind of keep that money separate. Glasses, which I need for March when I'll get my new prescription. Health and medical. So I did not really fund this and we ended up with 
at the end of this month, we'll have $1,300 in medical expenses that came through that I really wasn't prepared for. So, um, I am going to put $1,000. This is not going to be a cash envelope. This will be in a separate savings account just to have the money there so we don't go through what we went through right now. So the way I'm offsetting it is rollover money and then a little bit out of my cushion that I keep in my checking account. And then as my last resort is a medical spending account we have that was part of my husband's retirement. So I really didn't want to use that because I like that there just in case he leaves his current job and we need to pay medical premiums for, you know, the time that either we don't have another job that pays medical payments or medical insurance or we qualify for Medicare, which is way down the road. <laughs> um, so I kind of just want that money there. It's our deductible is a thousand dollars. So if nothing else, just to meet the deductible for the year. And then Invisalign, I need to start this. Um, my husband's new medical insurance actually covers Invisalign, which we've never had insurance that covered that, and that's kind of why I've hesitated. Liam and Milo are uh, my daughter's dogs. I spend a ton of money on them, so I finally got them their own little envelope. And then lottery. If you saw my uh, getting to know me video, you know why I have a lottery envelope. Planner. Um, planner could be planners, planning supplies, things like that. So, I mean, I honestly don't need anything else, but I keep funding that. And then self-care. Or 50 and self-care is like massage tip um, if I want to get a facial anything like that st. Patrick's Day we do go to a Irish bar listen to live music have dinner it usually runs about a hundred dollars so with this 50 I should be funded for that subscriptions which is really just Amazon but I put 25 a month and that's due in January. Tax prep always surprises me. So I took the 400 that we normally pay and we I divided it by I think it was 6 months, so October, November, December, January, February, March. So 6 months and so that's where I kind of came up with that number. Technology and that's replacing a phone or replacing a iPad, anything like that. So I kind of keep money aside for that. And I don't think I'm going to fund that, but I did take pull from that. So I might see if I can find money for that. And then vitamins. I was taking my vitamins out of our grocery money and then I when I really started to just take a deep dive in my budget I realized how much money I spend on vitamins so I started to give it its own category and I did uh, use that this month okay so let's see what we have and see if we can add some money into technology so 25 plus 50 plus 50 plus 50 I shouldn't do it this way because then I'll confuse myself, but I'm going to try. Okay. So it totals up to 2,458. My number I need to reach is 2,484, which gives me 26 whole dollars to put into technology. <clears throat> so I'm going to highlight the categories that will stay in my account and not come out. So technology stays in. 
Health and Medical is going to stay in. SC Shop stays in. And that's it. And then in my other categories, Giving stays in my account. I tie it online. Gas stays in my account because I don't like to get out and do it. And that's it. So everything else comes out in cash other than these categories. Now, as far as deciding how I want to break down the money, I use this sheet. So basically, it just has what category it is, and then I do my denominations. And this is an Excel spreadsheet that just adds it up for me, but I like to go through the process just so you understand what my thought process is. So the first thing I need to look at is the $405 that is going into the savings challenge because I break it up per week. So let's see, it's 75, 95, 110, and 125. And put a note down here, actually on page two. So savings challenge. And I could absolutely just put it in at the beginning of the month, but I don't like to do it that way. I like to do it when I'm doing my weekly check-in. Three and week four. So 75, 95, 110, and 125. Okay. And it should equal 405. So I'm going to actually start with savings challenge because I know I want to get it done right. So my amount is 405. So it will be two $100 bills. Two fifties, four twenties, three fives, and one ten. I'll see if that works. So So 200 plus 100 plus 80 plus 10 plus 15, 405. Okay, that works. So the rest I'll kind of just kind of go through. I'll just start to do just so that you can see the thought process and then I'll do the rest off camera. But I want to just, at the end of the month, at, you know, when I, before I go to get my cash out, then I look at what's in my back to bank envelope and I put those denominations in. I subtract those out from what I need and then that's how I determine the exact amount of each denomination and the total amount that I'm going to pull out of my account. So I want to make sure that when I come home and I'm ready to stuff my envelopes, I've got the right denominations. I don't have too much money or not enough money. <laughs> and I'm not trying to break money up, you know, because I, I pulled out 100 when I really should have pulled out 520s. So I'm going to go through and do this off camera and I'll be right back. And I'm back. And you can all thank me profusely for not making you watch me struggle with getting this to balance. So the total amount that I need to take out is 3,466 and that will cover my cash envelopes, my sinking funds, and my savings challenge. So this is how it broke down. So 12, this is how I kind of figured this part out. So I need 12 $100 bills. I need 17 50s. I need 60 20s, 16 10s, 10 5s, and 6 1s. And that's 3,466. Then I take my cash that I have in my back to bank envelope, which I've already taken back the majority of it already. 
Um, so I don't have much here. Normally I have a lot more than this, but I took it back mid month because it was a lot of money that was in this envelope. So what I have in this is I have two twenties, three, four. I have four fives, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And I have eleven ones. So I still need twelve one hundred dollar bills or twelve one hundred dollar bills. Yeah, twelve hundred. I still need 1750s, which is 850. I do have 220s, so instead of 60, I need to pull out 58. So 58 times 20 is 1160. I still need 16 ones. I I need 10 fives. I have 4, so I only need 6. And I have plenty of ones now, so I don't need any of those. So the amount that I need to pull out will be three thousand two hundred and forty. So when I add up, I don't know how to fix that right now. When I add up what I have here, so. So I'm not going to confuse myself. I'm going to pull out the five ones that are extra. So I have 20, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66. So I have $66. Okay, this does not match. Okay, 20, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66. So that part's right. So it should be 3,400, not 3,240. So let's go back and see here. So 12, let's see, 17 times 50 is 850. 50, 58 times 20 is 1160. 16 times 10, 160. Six times five is 30. 1200 plus 850 plus 1160 plus 160 plus 30. I just can't add. Okay, it matches 3400. So if I needed 30, 3466, I have in my back to bank 66. And then I'm going to pull out the balance, and that's 3400. So this is what I'll take to the bank and just hand this to the teller for my right denominations. Okay, so just to kind of things that kind of catch, you know, kind of made me struggle a little bit with this um, is that there's categories in here that are listed that I'm not funding. So for an example, if you look at Christmas, my Christmas is 100% funded. So I didn't need to pull any of those out. And then when I came back to this line, then I was like, oh, I'm still not pulling money out. So I went through and fixed all of that. But um, if it's highlighted in blue, I didn't put it over here in this column because that means I'm not pulling it out in cash. And you saw me do my savings challenge because I always do that first. But that is how it ended up. Um, I did print a fresh new one just to check my math, but I'll worry about that one later. So... That is my budget setup for November. I think I have included everything that I need to include. I always, you know, find little things and that's why I'll take it out of my seeking funds if I need to, but I think we're good to go for November. So I'll be back on Friday. Today is Wednesday. I'll be back on Friday to do my cash stuffing. And I will also be doing a savings seeking fund update. And then create a new starting balance and then I'll be adding to my thinking funds when I do my cash stuff.
So if you have any questions at all, please let me know. And let me know if this is kind of how you do with your budget, if you're doing yours all electronic, or if you are kind of doing a hybrid of both. So I hope you are doing well. Take care. And I'll